All right, guys, welcome back. Welcome back. This is going to be the second episode of Everything Works. But nothing works. <laughs> uh, this is an episode where I try to, or a series where I try to emphasize that it's not your strategy that's making you unprofitable or making it where you can't be profitable. It's your risk management. So we're going to do this again today. Um, last time we did MACD and Bollinger Bands. It was a terrible strategy, uh, but we still made money off of it, right? On the back test. Um, this time we're going to do... What did I want to do next? I think I wanted to do trend lines next. They're my favorite. Trend lines are my favorite. If you if you've been following me for any length of time, you know I love me an old, old nasty piece of trend line action. I love it. So we're gonna go to the Nasdaq. So let's hide some price action here. Um, let's go to Nasdaq. I think it's NQ. Am I right? Hey, look at me. Okay, so Nasdaq NQ. Okay, so let's go pull up. Wait, I don't know anything about this chart. Okay, so we have to know um what is good about the chart. This was from earlier today. We have to know what the chart can do, what its qualities are. Uh, so we need to pull up an ATR. So let's go here to the daily chart. Let's pull up an ATR of the NASDAQ average true range. Okay, there's already one down here. Okay, so the average true range of NASDAQ is, as of right now, it's 354. Okay, I'm just going to write this down here. Let me bring up paint real quick just to keep, keep you guys in the loop. So 354, 354 ATR the last few days. Okay, now, if I've got a daily ATR of 354, is that going to help me trade the five minute or two minute or 10 minute chart? Yeah, the answer to that is it's kind of tricky. It's yes and no. It's going to help you at the extremes. So if you're at the end of a move, if you're at a day where you've already moved 300 points, you know, don't be expecting another 100 point move out of it, okay? Um, because it's moving pretty much, it's average, and it might move a little bit more than that, but chances are you're going to be you're going to be close to this number by the end of any given session. So it'll help you with that. As far as it helping us with intraday, though, it doesn't really help us. So let's go to a two-minute chart of the NASDAQ. You know, I've never seen this chart. I don't know if it has enough data for two minutes. It should, but I'm not sure. So let's go to five minutes. Let's go to five-minute chart. Let's go to um, uh, the ATR for the five-minute chart. Okay, so this is how I'm looking at that now. I'm going to go back. And I want to be able to see, and it's easier if you turn these into bars than anything else. Let's turn them into bars or columns, whatever you want to call them. Um, I want to see if I were to use a a forty point stop. Let's go. Let's go with regular hours too. You know what? Let's do let's do extended hours because I want to be able to actually get twenty trades and not have to um, add some losing or winning trades to make the, the sample size good. Um, so we're gonna go to electronic trade, and we're gonna look at any period. Let's say forty. Let's start at 40, 40 points. So forty points gets us out of the average move of pretty much the. Overnight session. At 8 o'clock, when it opens, it, it surges up to about 40, right? So if we were to go to 20, we see that we could probably safely trade the overnight session with a 20-point stop loss because most moves are not touching that area. Okay, most moves are staying below that area by quite a lot. We could probably even get, get away with a little bit more. Okay, but we want a good average of what the ATR is doing on a five-minute chart. So I do this two ways. Let's do this. Let's come back here and see if we can we can get a good idea of what the average is. We see that the peak around the open is about 60-point stops. So we got about 60. And for the most part, we stay within that ATR range, right? Okay, so let's go to a chart now. Let's make it one of the first bars that we see so we can back test into it. Let's go here to the chart. Okay, open that up. Reset. Okay, um, we're going to take on the five minute chart, we're going to look at the look for the average size of bars on the five minute chart. So this one here looks like a 50, 54 minute bar, 54 point bar. This one's about 60 points. This one's about 63 points. This one's about 53. Uh, that's the overnight session of that day. And then we come back to the regular session. This one's about 50 right here. This one is about 44. Uh, oh, there's a trend line here. I, I must have played with NASDAQ recently. Hmm, I don't know when that was. Uh, okay, there's a uh, 41. There's 50. There's 51. So we're looking at about 50 is the average. We're just gonna eyeball it here. Looking about 50 is the average, right? That it moves, and uh, 60 is probably toward the high end of the range. 51. Yeah. So we could probably go with 50 here. Let's go with 50. Okay. And to really confirm that, what I like to do is I like to take. Come on now. I like to take a stop that's about 50, and I like to just put it over over trades that I could potentially take. So let's go with 50 here as close as we're going to get without giving ourselves a headache. 50 points. And we'll name it 50 points so we know what it is. This is the average move, right? Okay, 50 points, average move. And we know that the day is about 354 points on average. So let's let's put that on here too. Let's say 354. Let's say this one's 354 average. Okay, right there. All right, so this is the day. This is the move that we're trying to take out of the day. Okay, hit it, cut it there. And now we can delete the volume and we can show the price and we should have a nice sample. There we go. All right, so to start, we're just gonna go back and see if we can put together any trend lines right now to see what the price was doing before. Okay. Mm. Kind of like a broadening wedge here. And then you have a little one here. Okay, let's put our text up here. Let's put our anchor text up here. Um, this is just going to be trend line. We don't need it because it's going to be trend line trading. There's really no strategy for it. It's kind of it's kind of um, discretionary, okay? But we do have wins, wins, losses, okay? So our stop loss is going to be what are we saying? 54, 50, 50 points, 50 points, okay? And uh, we're going to try to hit a one to one point five, one 
for 1.5 RR, okay? So when we win, we're gonna win uh, 75 points. When we lose, we're gonna lose 50 points. We're gonna take 20 trades. Now here's the thing, anything, if we win, if we're taking 20 trades and we win 10 of them, we are already at 50%, okay? So let me show you how the math works on that. And this might kind of shorten the videos that we're gonna be doing on this series. So if I lose 50 points 10 times, I lost 500 points, okay? But if I win 75, uh, yeah, 75 points 10 times, I've made 650 points, all right? So as soon as I get to 50% on this strategy, just by controlling my risk, it's already a winning strategy over 20 trades. Does that make sense? Because even if I lost the next 10 in a row, uh, even if I lost exactly 10, they would average together and I'd be plus 250 points by the end of it, okay? So just remember that if we get to 10 wins before we get to, to uh, 10 losses, it's automatically a winning strategy just by controlling your risk because it doesn't matter what the losses are. Even if they're equal to the wins, we're gonna be winning because this is one and a half times, the wins are gonna be one and a half times the losses, okay? So uh, loss equals 50 points, win equals 75 points. Get rid of that. All right, so that's that's what it is. We're gonna be calculating the losses and wins right here. I'm gonna to try to get to 20. All right, let's go. We have liftoff here. Um, this portion will be sped up. Uh, I'm gonna give you my rationale behind why I'm taking the trend, why I'm taking the trade off the trend line. Uh, you should be able to see it. And if you watch my trend line trading series, which I will constantly be uh, expanding and doing more of, um, you will know why my, my um, rationale for taking this. So this is not a trend line trading in that series. Uh, it's, it's just a, it's in this series. So it's gonna be different. So don't expect a lot of explanation. Just watch me take the trades and let's see if we can win with anything on uh, this type of chart just by controlling our risk. Okay, all right, let's go. Finished with the back testing, and as you can see, we won 10 and we lost 10. Um, we want a really big one back here. Let's go. This really big one here, we would have held it overnight. Um, I took this because it was a rectangle pattern, and in, uh, in those, you always want to um, you always want to buy high or sell high and buy low. So I kind of cheated because <laughs> it's not necessarily a trend line. Uh, but if you count the bottom of this rectangle, it is a trend line. So it's hard to not let other other uh, price action um, 
things leak in when you're trying to trade just one strategy because you know a lot about price action. So it's hard not to let it leak into what you're trading, but um, yeah. So we're not going to count. So we get a slap on the wrist for taking this trade, for buying here, because there was no trend line unless you count this low here. You count these lows that span all the way back here. But uh, we're not going to count the entire 193 points that we would have got overnight uh, because that wouldn't be wouldn't be fair, in my opinion. So we've got 10 trades. And so it it, it panned out exactly like I thought it would pan out. Um, we're 50-50. This strategy is 50-50. Now, you could look at this and say, what strategy, Jay? This is a mess. This is this is horse shit wrapped in dog shit. But there's people that trade like this. And you see it has a 50% chance of winning. And you see I tried not to delete the boxes so you could see all the trades that I took at the end. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. So I'm missing I'm missing a couple trades here. I must have didn't copy enough boxes. But anyway, you saw me take 20. If you go back and slow it down, maybe half speed, you'll see all the trades and the reasons why. I tried to take them near trend lines, as I'm always teaching when we're trading with trend lines, there's areas, there's zones. So I tried to take them where there wasn't a lot of space in between the trend line, like right here. I'd call this a lot of space between this lower trend line. But right here, the space is pretty negligible. Um, a couple of them I didn't take that would have been winners. You saw me move those out of the way and then they went into profit. Uh, you know, that happens when you're trading too. a setup doesn't look quite good and you move it and it turns out to be your perfect setup. So. Your risk management will help you with taking that trade because if you see it, you know that, hey, um, I can take this trade with my risk in in um, line. And even if it fails, I'll be all right because my risk management will save me. So this one was no good. Um, well, this taken taken, you know, away from the trend line. Um, this one was a break of the trend line on a really strong bar. We took that because of that. Uh, this one was a win because we got out of that trade before it dumped. This was probably like some type of announcement, interest rates or something like that. Um, this was a losing trade here. Um, we could have did a better entry here. We kind of got in. We kind of got in where there was a lot of space right here. Kind of got in with a lot of space. So we were punished for that. That was a loss. Um, we wouldn't have won it anyway because even if we had gotten in up here near the trend line, well, we might have. What about that? No, we wouldn't have won that anyway. So we just lost that. Um, this one here. This one was a loss also. Uh, where did we enter? Looks like we entered. Where was this? Yeah, we entered here on this trend line break. On this trend line, we wanted it to stop and it didn't. It took us out of that one. Uh, this one here was an instant fail. Uh, we did enter. Uh, we could have did a better job of entering near. There's a lot of space between this entry and that trend line. We could have did a better job there. Um, this one here was a failure here. Why did we enter this one? Uh, I think we wanted to enter. I don't even remember. Um, this one here, this was a failure. We were expecting this. After this second rejection here, we were expecting this price to be held down, and it was not. It did eventually go into profit, I think. Did it? No, it didn't. So we lost that. Lost that no matter how we tried to play it. Um, this one up here. Um, we entered when we broke above this. When we When we started coming for this again, we entered here. That was a profitable one. This was a loss. The reason we entered this one was because this one was a loss. Never be afraid to try a trade idea again if it sets up again. Okay. So it approached it this time. I thought it would break. It didn't. Approached it the second time. Broke right through. Led to a profitable trade. Uh, this one here. Uh, why did we enter this one here? If I'm looking at trend lines here. Yeah, I don't know why I went long here. I can't tell you why. Maybe it was. I broke up through this and then came back up through it. So maybe it was because it tested it twice. So it, it broke up through it, waiting for a retest, failed retest, came back down to this line. I should have went long here. 
had I went long here, would that have helped? Yeah, that would have been a profitable trade. Um, but then it retested, and I thought, okay, it retested. And once it got right here, I thought it was a good trade, so was not. So that's the win rate on that. And it happened just like we said. So we take the 50 that we lost when we traded. Um, we take the 50 that we lost when we lost 10. And we took the seven, 75 that we won when we won 10. And we're up. It's 750 minus 500. So we're up 250 points. I think the NASDAQ is 20 per point. Am I right? Uh, the Dow's 5. The e mini's 50. I think this is 20. I think this is in the middle of those. So 20 per point. Um, That's $5,000 on this sample size. And here, here we know that we started on the 13th. So the 13th of September all the way down to all the way down to the 28th of September. So you got 15 days right here. You have 15 days Okay, 15 days, 18 hours five minutes. We didn't include um, what you call it, uh, extended hours. So 15 days, $5,000. So I think this is a worthy entry to the um, anything works, everything works, nothing works. And I'll see you guys in the next one. We'll probably just do, uh, we'll do some VSA in the next one. I expect VSA to be a little bit better than 50-50. I might be able to push that to around 70, but don't, 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 uh, Beat me up if I can. But let's see if we can. All right. I will see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching. Peace.